Hello and welcome back to Tech It With Myself Lewis, I hope you're all good. And today I'm just going to run you through a few changes that I've done over the last uh, day or so. So I've moved around my quarry, so now it's facing a different direction. And it, you know, it's just grabbing some new bits. We finished off the last quarry area and it dug up all the good stuff. So out of that hall we managed to get a few diamonds which I spent on the glass fibre cables. We got a bit of redstone, some sapphires and whatnot, a bit of iron, gold and good stuff. So it was a pretty good hole in all. Uh, and now we're on to the second one and I've put another chest up here just in case we run out on this one. I did end up getting loads of cobblestone last time and it started kind of flowing out the side. I was wondering where it was all going. So that's why we now have a box just completely full of cobblestone. <laughs> yes. Now I did use my... Um, my red alloy furnace and make myself some red piping or circuitry so that way I could just put all this up here some uh, red alloy wire and uh, that way when I want to get it all going just click this and it will do it all at once really simple stuff you know but it just makes it a lot easier than having free switches so I'm pretty happy with that but at the minute we don't need anything going because I have nothing in there so yeah we're just gonna leave that off for the time being there ain't nothing so today we're actually going to finally make our way to the nether. I think that's the best thing to do. I have some obsidian, which we can use to get there. And I just need to craft myself a way of actually getting it going. So let's grab a little bit of iron. Yeah, a little bit of iron. And some flint. Good times. And we're just going to make ourselves a nice flint and steel. Which way around is it again? There we go. That's the bugger. So we're going to build this one. Hmm. We're going to build it away from the base, purely because I don't want to hear the all over the place. And eventually I will make a room for it, but you know, just for the time being we're going to put it over here because I'm only really going to be going in there for a little bit just to grab a few bits and bobs. I need some nether rack and I need a, uh, I need a few other bits and bobs, some glowstone probably. So I'm thinking, you know, we'll just build it here. This looks like the best place to build it to me. So let's go put all this guy down, shall we? So we need those there. And put this guy here. And build up. Cool. It's looking good. And let's just get on top. And build across here. Ooh, very close. Oh, maybe we need just one more. One more obsidian. Nope, I put a little bit of sand in the corner and it did it. <laughs> I thought for a minute then the uh, this video was already over before I even started. But, you know, I put my magical skills to mind and remembered that you don't actually need to put the corners in. So, good times. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm thinking the best thing probably to do is going to be to... I'm going to put my stuff in here. All the stuff that we don't need while we're there. So, I'll leave my shovel behind, my axe... Uh, we'll leave this behind. I'll take some torches and whatnot. And actually, I might take my shovel just in case, you know, if we need to get ourselves some soul stand or something like that. So let's go and have a look. And hopefully, it's going to be a good spawn this time. My feed the beast, it was terrible. Here we go. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I'm quite impressed with this one. Quite impressed. And automatically we have some soul sand. So I'm just going to grab a few bucket bits of this first. You know, you never know when you're going to need some soul sand. There we go. Loads of soul sand. Amazing. Cool beans. Right, so we've got that. Oh, we spawned right next to some glowstone. I'm really liking this spawn. You know, this is a really good spawn. Except I don't see any enemies anywhere, which is a little bit worrying. Hold on, have I got it on peaceful? I have got it on peaceful. <laughs> that would be why. Let's put it back. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab some of these. And straight away I can hear a ghast. Oh, if I only left it on peaceful. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, look at this stairway up here. I wonder where that goes to. So what I really want while I'm here is some never brick, because I'm going to use the never brick to make a few bits and bobs that we're going to need to carry on our thermal exchange, um, or thermal expansion even. So, you know, I could take some of this, but I don't really want to. I'm just going to venture up here and see where this place leads to, because this looks very ominous, if you ask me. It looks like it could go somewhere good. 
Turns out it doesn't. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to have a search around the nether, and I will be back shortly once I've found something interesting. Alrighty, so we're literally, what, 112 meters away from the portal, and I've already found myself a very nice nether fortress. So we're going to go ahead and take a few of these bricks, because these are really what I'm here for. These guys are really loud. <laughs> if only they could just put a uh, gobstopper in it. So we're just going to go ahead and grab some of this. I could venture further in, you know, but I'm a little bit worried. I could venture in, but once if I die or get blown up by a blaze, I can already see a blaze there staring at me. You know, I might just have a little gander around and then run away. <laughs> Let's just have a quick look in here and see what we can find. You know, it's always interesting when you come to these places. I'm going to take some of this as well. Cool. Alright, let's check this base out. Hopefully it's going to be good. And there's not going to be too much rubbish around here. And hopefully I'm not going to have to go past this gas to actually find anything good. Really, I want some never warts. You know, because once you've got a few, you don't have to worry about it then. You can just grow them. Nice and easy. Hmm. Nothing around here. Huh. Alright guys, I'm going to go check out this base and hopefully not die. And I'll be right back. Nope, unfortunately I didn't manage to find any, but that's not a worry. You know, we can always come back another time. So I'm going to make my way back to the overworld now. And... Is it dark outside? It is dark outside. I hate it when it's dark outside. <laughs> Only bad things happen when it's dark. Purely my quarry stops running, because it's, it's all powered by solar energy. But that's alright, I guess. We can always have a little sleep. I really need to do something about this bridge though, because having a, having a well in the last episode we had a creeper run across it and pretty much kill me, or try and kill me inside my base, which was not very cool. So I'm just going to have a little sleepies and then we'll be right back. Right, so we're back, had a sleep, feeling better. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to make a few more things just before we kind of get leave it alone and you know with all this sort of stuff we've got here, you really can make a really cool kind of uh, line of machines. So that's really what I'm intending on doing. And we're going to use the Never, once I've got another base here, for another purpose really. Uh, more for the uh, magma that it holds. I want all of its lovely magma. So yeah, that's the plan I think. So the first thing we're going to make before we start doing anything uh, really snazzy is a induction smelter. Now this guy is really cool because you can double your ore output with it, which is really nice, but it does require a few other things to get going, so you do have to use sand and other bits to uh, make it, you know, or well, not to make it, but to get it going, so yeah, bit of a weird one. So let's have a look and check this guy out, shall we? So the induction smelter, which is this bad boy here. Now to make him, we need sand, we need a bucket, we need a machine frame, which is the old uh, iron the gold and the glass. So let's just go ahead and make a few of these items now. And what else do we need? We need iron. We need a bit of gold, which we've got tons of gold. And we'll take some redstone with us as well because we need the redstone in a minute anyway. So let's make one bucket like that. And I always forget which way around this goes. I think it's that way. I hope. Yeah, got it right this time. Good times. Now we need to make a reception coil this bad boy here and we need some sand yeah loads of sand so this guy looks just like this and we got copper on us we need a little bit of copper we'll take a whole stack why not <laughs> so we're just gonna put the copper along here and we'll put this guy here and this guy here and some sand and a bucket good times gives us one of these bad boys now these are pretty cool you know I'm just gonna lay it along here I'm gonna get myself another uh, pipe so we can power it and eventually we're gonna need some more power than what we've got going here you know this isn't the best energy setup but you know at least it works pow there we go now I'm going to turn a few of his bits and bobs off. So the green obviously is uh, where we're going to have some bits and bobs going in. But you need a few things to actually get the induction smelter up and running. 
Now the smower itself has a storage space of uh, 4,800 millijoules which is quite nice, an internal capacitor and it runs on a round about 9 millijoules a tick at full capacity so it does take a bit to get itself going but it's quite nice once it is going which is uh, pretty cool. So like I say you can double your ore output with it so let's go have a look see if I've got some uh, stuff that we can use. So we've got some pulverized tin, some silver, a little bit of copper, let's try the copper see how it works. So we're going to pop this guy inside here, <clears throat> like that, and it's doing nothing. You wonder why it's not doing anything. Generally it's because you need a little bit of sand in here. And that's the uh, weird kind of byproduct of this that you need to actually get it going. It needs a little bit of sand to work. And uh, there we go, a little bit of sand, very nice. For some reason it doesn't want to do this last bit though. <laughs> I think it might only do two at a time, which is uh, a bit weird, but that's fine, that's fine I guess. But this isn't the main reason we've got the induction smelter. There's a few things we need to make in here to carry on doing what we're doing. And we're also going to need to make a magma crucible and a liquid transposer to kind of finish off the line of items that we need along here. So I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, magma crucible, which is a very cool item indeed. So, oh, and there's a... <laughs> oh, I blew up all my stuff. <laughs> This is why we need to do something about the gate downstairs. All right guys, back in two seconds once I've cleared this mess up. And as if by magic, it's all remade. <laughs> Voila. So and for some reason though, my uh, boxes are going mental again. Damn, you optifine. Oh. <laughs> now, where was we before we almost got blown up by a creeper? We was in the middle of making a magma crucible. All right, so magma crucible is gonna be the one we're gonna look at now. So we need never brick, we need machine frames, redstone, copper, and a bucket. So let's go ahead and make a load of this now. So we've got a bucket. We need a we need another one of these reception coils, like this. We need some glass, which is around here somewhere. There you are. And we need to go ahead and make another one of these machine frames. Just like that. One machine frame. And we needed the never brick. So if I can remember how this goes. Was it that and that? Ooh, sounds close. A little bit of copper. There we go. One magma crucible. Now this guy is really cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this output to nothing. Because I'll just take it out manually. You know, I'll take it out manually. It's easier. And I'm going to grab myself a, a another uh, bit of pipe. Another stone conductive pipe like this. And we're going to go ahead and plonk him next to this guy. See, we're getting a really nice kind of little production line going on here. Loving it. And we're just going to put this guy like this. Now, we're going to turn this side off because we don't need anything here. But what we can do with this, once it starts getting enough power, so let's turn these guys on get a bit of power going. Oh, we got loads of uh, coal in there, so I'm impressed. And this guy will slowly start filling up. Now, the magma crucible is pretty cool. How it works is you can throw certain items like cobble, stone, netherrack, obsidian, and whatnot in there, and it will create lava. Really cool. Really, really cool. But to do that, it uses up quite a lot of power, and then it will dump it in its little tank here that can hold 10,000 MB. So let's show this off. Let's show a bit, bro, a Brit of a uh, bit of netherrack. That'll do. Bit of netherrack in there. And slowly but surely it will actually use the uh, never rack to create lava but because there isn't enough of the internal storage in here to do so it isn't going to do it just yet so all we're going to do is we're just going to wait for all of these to uh, completely fill up and wait for this guy to get all his energy back together and then I'll show you what it actually does or the main purpose of why we're going to use it. In the meantime, while it's getting its internal buffer up, we're going to go ahead and make one more thing. We're going to make what's called a liquid transposer. Now this guy is what allows you to mix certain liquids with items to make new items. Pretty cool. Sounds weird, but it's not. And to do this, all we need is buckets, glass machine frames, and copper. So, and we've pretty much already got most of that. So, let's just go ahead and make another one of these guys. And you know, I love how the items in the uh, this section is pretty much all the same. Just makes it really easy for beginners and uh, kind of, it's, it's really nice to start the game this way than with the industrial craft. You know, everyone's done industrial craft a quadrillion times. So, I quite like doing this. Just makes it, it's a bit fresh. So there we go, a bit of glass like that. Got another one of these guys. Let's make another bucket. There we go, very nice. And what else do we need? Bit of glass, nice. Really simple, not expensive. 
So let's put these guys like that, a bit of glass, and a bucket, and we have a liquid transposer. And we're going to pop him on the end, here. Now, these two being next to each other is quite important when it comes to building it this way around. So, what's going to happen is everything that this guy does is going to be popped into here. Now, because the output for this is on the right hand side, it's going to automatically be dumped into our liquid transposer, which will then show in here, which is pretty cool, right? And then we can actually start making some really cool items. Now, the main reason I wanted the magma crucible is not just because it can turn certain items into magma, which is a much easier way than going around trying to find it yourself or going to the nether, you know, but unfortunately it does have quite a high Michael Jackson cost on it. So it's not really a viable way of doing it but still pretty cool nevertheless is you can grab yourself some redstone and if you lug some redstone in the sky like this it's going to smelt the redstone and make liquid redstone now this stuff's going to go into here and then automatically jump through the output into our liquid transposer in here and you can see at the minute it has 25 out of 10,000 mb of liquid redstone pretty cool right now, once you've got enough liquid redstone in here, you can use this to create new items by using the liquid transposer. And with the magma crucible, he's just going to keep ticking along, making all of this. Unfortunately, with the redstone, you don't get much liquid redstone compared to the magma that you'd get by using Neverrack and the cobblestone and such and such. Just bear in mind, when you are using cobblestone and those parts, it does use a lot more energy, Michael Jackson's, to actually get it going. So, you know... Not really a feasible way of doing it, but if you do need a quick bit of lava and you haven't got a secret base like me that has lava in the middle, then that's probably a really cool way of doing it, I would say. So the reason we're going to use the liquid transposer is we're going to make ourselves a easy way to carry around some energy. So we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a redstone energy cell. Now this guy is really, really cool. Basically, he will store all of your MJs, all your Michael Jacksons, and when you carry them around, it won't lose any of that. So you can take it anywhere with you. It holds a massive amount of MJs, and you can just use it to power bits. So, you know, it's, it's really cool. Really nice and cool. All right, you guys. So I'm thinking we're going to leave this one here. You know, we've got blown up already once today, so I don't want to make that a second. <laughs> and I will see you soon for another episode. Have a good one, and goodbye.